if you don't have a paint booth and you're trying to pretty much figure out how to spray a car without a paint booth or you can't afford one or you aren't able to get one just because of location or whatever your reason is to spray in a booth and you're not fully familiar with it, then this is probably hopefully the video for you. So if you already haven't, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, man, it's your boy Bezo with Wills. We back at it. All right. These are my steps and my preparations to preparing for a paint job. Now, it's multiple ways you could do it. Everybody got different ways. This is my way. Um, and if you got, and if you got to feel like you got a better way, man, I'm all ears. Drop it in the comments. You know, I, I take a, take a look at it. I, I uh, give it a shot. Now, I typically do not do this, but since I'm making this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And two, I gotta go ahead and do it uh, because I did paint the frame and I painted the firewall and yeah, I sprayed the suspension. So I did that first. Um, and now we, I felt like this was the easiest way for me to, um, keep that, keep that frame clean as possible. So of course you don't have to tape. I would recommend it though. I would highly recommend, I'm going to go ahead and just chop it up with y'all on the recommendations and in the midst of what I do. Now I'll explain, um, you know, what I, what I don't do for specific reasons and what I do for specific reasons. My specific reasons are um, wetting the floor, number one, making sure that you wet the floor. I typically wet the whole entire floor. I typically wet everywhere. I, I don't care if I'm spraying a hood. You can call it excessive. You have to make sure you do everything in your power to make sure you get a clean paint job if you don't have a paint booth. Because if you can spray that hood without having to color sand and buff it, then do that. Do that. You can lay down, and we'll talk about my guns over there, but you can lay down um, some clear coat flat enough and smooth enough and crispy enough to not have to buff it. I promise you. You could definitely do that. It is a bit of a challenge if you are not in a paint booth. So you're going to have to take those extra steps such as wetting the floor. Wetting the floor will just make sure that when you're walking around or you have dust on your shirt, you should be wearing a paint suit. I have a paint suit. I'm, I'm back on that now. Literally just got a paint booth. I've only used it twice. So, um, yeah, the, the water on the floor will actually keep that dust, dirt, anything that could be floating around, hair, lint, it'll keep it down until that floor dries up. You got a, you got a little bit of time depending on um, the, you know, the temperature in your shop, uh, right now it's, it's pretty cool. It's about 63 right now. So anyways, and temperature does matter. We'll get into that later, but more than anything, trying to minimize that dust. I typically don't mask up until I'm done sanding because I don't want no sanding dust in my plastic or anything like that. So I would typically sand the car, then mask it. And then just got right around, scotch right around the edges. And then blow it. I don't want no dust on my fresh, nothing, nothing. Don't even look at my mask and don't even, yeah. But anyways, wet the floor is number one. If you painting anything, just wet the floor in the vicinity. You ain't got to go to the extreme of what I did as far as wetting the floor. I wet the, I wet the floor everywhere, every time. Um, I don't care. I don't care if somebody come in. I want to make sure that, you know, ain't nobody moving no dust. Cause it will happen, especially if you spraying black. Now, number two, um, but paint suit, wear a paint suit. Don't feel like you good, you too good enough for a paint suit or don't feel like, oh, well, I didn't really mask or I didn't really sand or I didn't really know. Like definitely me and my, I'm doing body work, sanding, priming, painting, clear. I'm doing all the above. I gotta have a paint suit. I, it's mandatory that I have a paint suit. Paint suit would just ensure it is it's just, it's like insurance on a car. Like <laughs> you never know, you know, if it happens, if you get dust on it, on your paint job, you, I mean, why, why take chances? You know, why take chances? Try to aim for the cleanest paint job. Paint suits, um, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them anywhere. I got my paint suit for about 40 bucks. I got a Sherwin Williams paint suit. I did have a DV1 uh, paint paint suit. That was like 80, 60 or 80 bucks. You got good quality silk suits that keep you warm and X, Y, and Z, yada, yada. Or you go get the plastic for 10 bucks, like however you want to do it. Wear a paint suit. Wear a paint suit. That will just, that will minimize something. I promise you, believe it or not, your lint, your shirt, all of that. I had a few times where I've had some of my friends just come check out a paint job in the midst of me painting. And one had a, a orange hoodie on, the other one had a red, and I had a blue. All three of our colors 
the lint was in the fresh black paint job. It's actually on my YouTube about a year and a half ago. Um, and I had to resand, I had to sand that clear coat down and reshoot it. Uh, so, so don't think that your lint won't get on you, even your hair and your head. Number three, go over your masking. Check over your masking. Make sure that the masking, that masking is the most important thing, honestly. Like if you ain't masking right, I don't care how glass you lay down the paint and the clear coat. If the masking ain't right, that's it. Like that's, that, I mean, like it says a lot. So making sure that that masking is, cause you don't want to create work. We had a, it's, look at this, boom. Look at that right there. Of course that happened, I'm blowing, uh, blowing the car down. Anyways, taking care of your mask and doing it slow, taking your time. Um, Y'all probably like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, I want my, I need my lip. I'm gonna paint over that. But um, taping down to the floor, you don't have to, like I said, it's not, ah, it's a slippery slope. It depends on what type of booth you have. It depends on your airflow. Some cases you might even not have painted the frame and still might have to do this because that overspray will climb under that plastic. Typically, I, I tuck it. Um, in this case, I went ahead and did it, like I said, because of the extra things that I had done. But um, my fans actually pull great when I have my sheet of plastic up and across. Um, these these fans pull outstanding. They're not even really recommend. I would not recommend to use these brands of fans. They just haven't had any issues since since I started. <laughs> I've been using them fans for about a year and they pulling I'm not upgrading until they blow up so be sure so. to take your time and do your masking uh correctly and making sure that everything is flush just go over it take your time you are not supposed to rush this not 80 percent of my jobs I was probably rushing I was trying to hurry up and get the job done I was trying to and typically I'd be painting at night I hate painting at night it's it's too cool uh, it's the, the temperatures are really cool. And during the day I'm running errands and doing calls and insurance stuff. So it's like, uh, I end up having to paint at night. So that's, that's my reasons, but masking, 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 just even if it take you, like, if I don't know, I don't know, you clock out at five, you in your shift at five o'clock. If it's like three o'clock, I wouldn't even go for it. You don't, the painting is like literally everything you've prepped up for don't why f it up why rush it why, why like you want to go typically when you paint you want to go in today like all right really the only thing that i need to be doing is spraying today i'm supposed to really just only be painting today so you also want to have that mindset what's that number four uh <laughs> but um yeah so wetting the floor paint suit making sure that masking is everything taking care and going over your work, really checking it really in general. Don't just go over your mask and check over your primer spots, making sure that you don't have unsanded primer. You don't have unsanded areas. You want to just take your time and just literally caress the car. Because if you paint on top of your imperfections, you've wasted time and you've created more time than if you just slow down to speed up. Take your time, slow down, look over it, do it right, and then go ahead and spray it. And you'll be beyond satisfied when you know all you got to do is demask and roll it outside. And disregard the music in the background. I have people that have a body shop across the street. They do PDR. But there's homeless people that be right here. And they're literally right behind his building. So he literally hooked up an intercom and has the radio playing 24 hours, seven days a week to literally drown them out like push them <laughs> push them and it's annoying for me i can't imagine he said the speaker right over there by their tent and it's unfortunate we downtown oklahoma city so it's like but the location i'm not too too concerned about the location i'm licensed to carry i keep the thing in my boot and then our security cameras will act our security camera actually picks up the sound of their fire crackling so uh they get the plot and we two steps ahead. After you've assessed the car and made sure that it's, it's decent, okay, cool, my masking is good. I don't see no unsanded primer. I don't see any uh, dents or deep scratches or anything that might, you know, tamper with the quality. Shoot, all right, bet. Now let's go to the real area. It's just making sure that your guns is clean. Your guns is clean. I am bad at that. I'm not going to lie. Like if it's a long night, which it typically is, at 2, 3 in the morning, finishing up a paint job, and I've been up at since 4 a.m. prior to, you know what I'm saying? I Yeah, I'm tired. I might throw my guns in a bucket and just, shit, I'm, I'm out. Like, it's, yeah. 
when you are running a business and you have to do that, do everything yourself. Yeah, it's cut yourself a little slack. I get I, I've done. The, I've had those days and I've had to come back in and take my gun all the way apart and soak it and clean it and scrub and scrub and scrub and spend an hour when I could have been on a fender. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I've, I that's occasionally every now and then. Anyway, I got a Sada. 5500 Jet X. Well, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I, it's like it's like a rich person buying a new car and they don't even know how to drive it yet. They just got it. Anyway, 5500 X. Uh, no Jet X 5500. Let me say it for you for you guys. Anyway, we got the Iwata WS 400. I know what that is. DV1 and another DV1. I got a base coat and a clear coat DV1. These are my gun setups settings. Making sure that your guns are clean. I use the 3M um gun cleaner and then i use my uh my finish one oh, finish one lacquer thinner use both of those those are good you better not wear no water and so <laughs> you better not put water and soap through y'all guns man <laughs> anyways um yeah those are what i typically do to clean my guns i got my brushes and stuff like this uh you'll need you'll definitely need um i do not use a wire but Making sure that gun is clean. You want to make sure them hoses and nozzles is, is good and fresh. Yeah, focus now. It's good and fresh. You want to take the cap off, look through it in the light. Make it look. I got cleaner in there too. Yes, sir. Um, making sure that none of your holes are clogged because it's going to mess up your pattern. If your pattern ain't right, you might as well just stop. Um, especially if you spray metallics. Um, this is a base coat gun, gun. It shoots phenomenal. I don't have, oh my God. Like this is, this is like Versace of the guns and yeah. And I have one and it's definitely a blessing. I worked my way up. Unfortunately, I cannot find my $20 Harbor Freight paint gun that paid for all of these. Like my very first paint gun was $20 and now we almost a couple of grand in paint guns. Uh, this is for my bed liner. So but anyways, making sure them guns is clean, making sure you just just take the gun apart, make sure you look through it. You don't want to be dealing with that. When you spray, you want to just load up and spray. You don't want no distractions. You don't want no dilemmas, no nothing. You just, I promise you, it'd be really, really nice if I could just walk in here, suit up and spray and go home. That's the goal. That's really the goal. I'm not about, I'm not trying to be a, you know, a, a body shop owner, whatever the case is like. I'm not trying to be working for the rest of my life. It's as simple as that. Shit. <laughs> but make the job as easy as you can. And those are taking the extra steps and making sure that the quality is there. The, the you know, the structure is there. The timing is there. So we're going to take our time and, and clean these guns and making sure that they they good. And after you've made sure your guns is good, they're ready to spray. Make sure that you have everything you need for the job. You got your tape. Um, you got your tape. You got your liners. Every I, there was a point in time where uh, I had I was like scraping up five six bucks for some liners. I would used to buy these individually at the local paint store I typically go to, and now we buy the boxes in bulk. So it's a it's definitely a transition. I'm definitely better. Than, I feel better than I've ever been uh and I ever have but anyways uh making sure that you got um now i do not see them over here uh we got our fine line edge tape but i do not see not a, a some over but typically i might get little bugs or get like little tiny pieces of trash or lint to land in there you need something to kind of dig those out not necessarily dig but you need something to kind of pick those out sometimes i use the edge of a razor blade or sometimes you can fold up to one inch and just kind of dab it re-clear it a few more times but you need like little tiny pick tools not not pick tools but it's like almost like wood chips i thought i had one up here but they also have yeah it's stuck out there but they also have those with the little cotton ball at the end for dabbing but yeah, typically you want to, you know, have some of them on, on standby. We got our tack rags. We got them gloves. Um, these right here, Teflon tape for the for the hoses in case they leak. My my gun tip all, all it typically leaks. I've changed out my heads. As a matter of fact, they don't. They haven't been leaking ever since I, I swapped that uh, and bearings out. So um, initially, like I said. I would go ahead and wrap your gun, but if you are confident that it doesn't leak at the hose or anything like that, then cool, shoot, you good to go. And then, shoot, determine what clears you want to use. This is 
high tech clear and then I typically use finish one it's a uh, CF 720 lays down great has the UV protection in there um, you can get it damn near 125 maybe online I was spraying I was take ah my bad I was paying about 175 down there but I found out it's 100 online I'm like damn anyway uh, thick it lays down thick. It's not none of that water or nothing, nothing like that. Too cold to look like butter, but I'm not going to lie. Now, I will go ahead and get to the, I don't know. I do want to make a gun video, like a separate gun video. I might do that because I, yeah, yeah. I'll make a gun video because I'm going to have to show y'all how they spray because they all are a difference. But um, yeah, man, these clear the hot tech. I haven't used this yet. I have not used the hot tech. I have used the... uh I have used the uh, finished one. Uh, I do like that. But I haven't used this on a full complete or anything like that. I just used this on the hood. It's all right, but it's not as impressive as this. But the, <laughs> that's the thing. If you spray if you spray with certain clears with certain guns, they lay down. Oh, my God. That, I water that motherfucker right there. I swear to God. Man, I promise you. Let's go ahead and talk about the guns. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say this. I'll just say this. When I had my twenty dollar gun, I bought a fifty dollar gun. And when I bought the fifty dollar one, I was like, "Ooh, ain't nothing. Uh, uh-uh. this is hard. This is laying down. This is mine. You a fifty dollar gun." Then I went from the fifty to a two hundred and fifty dollar AccuSpray kit. I bought them with the inner interchangeable, well, interchangeable, replaceable tips. And I was like, oh, yeah, I sat on that for like maybe a few months and was like, ain't nothing better than this. And then I think I got a little extra money. must have got like taxes or something, something big. But, yeah, I bought the DV-1, the Velvet's base coat gun. And when I got that, I was like, there's no way in hell there's any other gun spraying like this. I, I've been missing out X, Y, and Z. I was geeked and I had sat on this for like a, like a year and Almost almost two years without messing with no other gun. And then my cousin was working with me in the backyard for a little bit. And he would leave his guns. And he had a WS-400. And he was like, it's a clear coat gun. You should try it. And I tried it. And I had, I, you, I, I got it. <laughs> it took me a while. I got it. <laughs> but that's, I think that's about a $1,000 gun. Um, I got it on sale. I caught it on sale. So, uh, yeah. And no other clear coat gun has has changed my mind. Now I got this one because this this is definitely what I could afford at the time. And this one about 600 bucks. Yeah, so I got that and then I was like, damn, it's a but I'm not going to lie that that's a beast too. That's a there ah is this is I could talk about this all day. I could talk about this all week. It's a slippery slope between these two right here. These is these is two two monsters. I would never sell this though. I wouldn't get rid of this. DB1 Damn near, it can you can put them in the boxing ring together and it'd be a good fight. Like, but it ain't just no major, major, major difference. But this right here does push out way more overspray than this. And this one right here itemizes so much. So I, I it's hard to say so much better. But this one, your first coat, you damn near look like you didn't spray three. Like I'm, that's the best way I can spray. You spray one coat with the eye water with some good clear, it's gonna look like your first coat you didn't spray three. Like, and but this one right here is less over spray. It's a, um, I think it's a low pressure gun. I know the DV one. I'm gonna know the DV one base, but um, yeah, it's yeah. Like this is like what I'm pulling out if I'm like yeah I'm popping my shit because I know I'm not color sanding and buffing. This one I might, yeah, I, I can not, but at the same time I can get away with this one um, without color sand and buff. I could clear your car and you think I color sand and buff it with that gun. Like that's that's the thing. But it's just when you when you kind of have a when you know what to look for when somebody's laying down clear, you're gonna know. Like okay, that one right there, you're gonna know. You know, look, you're gonna look at the panels and be like. This panel looks good, but this panel, oh my God. Yeah, it's going to be the eye water. Anyways, let's move on. Now, keep it, keeping the area clean. Try your best not to sand in the same area as you're painting. Try your very best. Like, 
wherever you're wherever you're painting at, you need to act like that's your paint booth. You need to literally treat it like it's your paint booth. Keep it clean. Don't be walking in there with your dirty shoes. But under the circumstances that I have right now, I I can't really yeah I can't really be picky as I want to be. So. And then I'm typically having to touch up on some stuff and stuff like that. My brother, he just he just get the den out and just <laughs> and send it my way. Like, hey man, he I'm more I'm more like the critiquey, tedious, boring, getting into the cracks and sending in there and folding the damn sandpaper. He like, hey, this big ass dent gone. Go ahead, dude, make it pretty now. Like, that's that's me. That's me. But he cold. I can't take that from him. I, hell no. Nah. I I'd be sick as hell if he left. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. Making sure it's two things. Making sure that you you aim to paint on the right day. Now, I know a lot of circumstances, uh, circumstances you're not. You, the day you ready to paint is the day you got to paint. I get it. I understand that. You have you don't have to say no more. If you got to paint, paint. I painted when it was snowing outside. Like my circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. But. Try to aim for a good, a, not an extremely hot day, but a cool day. Like in, in between like the 70s and 70s, 70s and 80s. 80s is kind of pushing it, but uh, typically, typically you cool even if it's at 100 outside. It's just you, that clear will dry up on you. Now, I'm don't, let's not front and act like temperatures of, you know, the temperatures of the day don't matter. They do. They do. And I'm a street painter. Like, I say street painter. <laughs> ah, that's funny. I'm a I'm an underground painter. I'm a backyard painter, I guess. Nah, nah, I got a shop now. I got I got a business. I can't say that no more. Um, but I've painted a lot of cars in the snow, but you really you better read the back of them cans and they'll tell you uh the de desired temperature that you should be spraying at. Um, I feel like comfortably 60, like 64, 65 and 85 to not about 90. I say in between there, if you got a shop shack, whatever you got, you, you, sh you'll be fine. But that clear coat will dry up. It's just too hot. But, uh, all right. Uh, now more than anything, your mindset, have the right mindset. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to hold you and I'm not even going front. 80, about 90% of the, ah, that's scary. 80, I say 80, 80% 80 of the time that I'm painting, that I'm, by the time I'm painting, I'm not even in the right mindset. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I do not, I do so much. My responsibilities is, is through the roof. Like I said, I'm thinking about all five of my kids. I'm thinking about my woman on my ass because she want to go out to eat. And then I'm getting, I'm, I start thinking about the eight other customers that I got that, that really want pictures and videos and this and that. And I get, boy, man, my mind be going. My mind be going when I need to be focusing on this car that I'm getting ready to spray. You got to be in that right mindset. You got to have that mindset. You got to literally pop your music in. And it's, it's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to be in here vibing. You're supposed to be in here like ah, 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 painting like and taking your time. Take your time. Literally, take, what's the rush? What is the rush? Take your time. Typically, 98% of the time when I'm rushing, I fuck up. I, I mess up. I literally, my holes will splash water on the side of the bed that I just cleared. Or the, the, the fan is just working even more one day. The ampage and the voltage is just kicking and it's sucking, the, it's sucked the plastic off the, I don't know, like you, it will happen. Anything you can think of, I swear to God, I didn't have bird, a bird swinging through my, my shop and just shit on a panel. Like, I promise you, I can't make this up. I didn't have moths. I didn't have all type of bugs. I've had it all. I mean, caterpillars. I'm talking about spiders. I'm talking about baby spiders with the little nest on it. I'm talking about anything you can think of. But typically, uh, trash and dust, which why, which is why we got to typically color sand and buff. I sprayed in a paint booth. Let don't don't y'all let me get a paint booth. It's, <laughs> it's over with. I'm be laying down straight butter. Now, not saying 
I'm not saying that if, if you get a paint booth, you're not going to have any trash at all. That's not the case. It's a lot of paint booths that typically have a lot of trash. It mean, will get trash in there. So it ain't just trash resistant. There's trash poof. But anyways, having the right mindset, man. You got to be in that mindset. It's supposed to be fun. This is the funnest part. This is what you're doing it for. This is what, you know, all this sanding and breaking it down and priming and blocking and twisting and yachting. And imagine the paint job ruining all of that. Imagine the paint job being the cost of, yep, it ain't good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we are at that point. Tomorrow, I'm going to spray it. Tomorrow, I'm going to spray. I did go ahead and spray this hood. Um came out pretty cool it's it's got i got a color sand above it i ain't even about the front so but i ain't gonna lie so what i did was just to just to kind of make sure and that sucks you can see it really good with through my camera they over there jamming i better not get copyright for this i better get paid for this video man <laughs> nah all right but i hit about i knew i was gonna have the color sand above it so i hit about five coats of clear i'm not even gonna hold you Hit about five coats of clear because I did splash water in here, but you can kind of see it. Yeah, the bigger dots, yeah, that's a little bit of water. Now, good news is it was on my third tack coat. So it was tacking and the water got on there because my floor was drying up. But yeah, when you're spraying black, yeah, you got to be you gotta be on your P's and Q's. But we'll take like some 2,000 grit. We'll take some 2,000 grit. We'll bake it, though. I do got my heaters over there. But we'll bake this hood and then um, take some 2,000 grit tomorrow, chase it with some 3,000 grit, compound it, polish and finish it, and then it'll be ready. So, yeah, man, just having the right mindset. Let me get out of here. We would. I, yeah, I got a little bit more prepping to do. The truck is all the way ready. This is how we prepped it, like I said. Um, we'll be painting here tan, tan, tan uh outside of it tan and then the bed the bed is actually going a red bed liner and then we got the doors we did the body work on the back the front sides and we flipped them over and we have to sand a little bit more on the jams we're yeah i mean tomorrow see tomorrow i would have loved to prep myself up to just walk in here and paint but i got them doors to prep up and yeah we still probably got about two hours which means it's about four hours of work uh in a body shop at least to do so about four hours of work and then we can start painting so i'll probably get my break so it'd be times where i don't answer the phone i don't even want to be bothered because i'm in the midst of literally resting so i can get back on the car uh so i'll probably get up early in the morning and we'll spray the doors i mean we'll we'll do the doors back side of this the front side of this fender is actually going tan and the back side is actually going red because the whole engine bay, even underneath the hood, is going to be red. This this truck going to be ham. This this truck going to be tough as hell. Uh, but, yeah, man, this is kind of my preparation video and we'll give you guys an idea of what I do before a paint job. So the only thing a little bit different that I don't do is wrapping up the car. I haven't done that in a while, but that just ensures that you don't get no... Uh, yeah, I got a leak somewhere, so keep cutting on. But anyways, yeah, I hope the video helped. Y'all make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all feel free to drop a comment or ask questions. Uh, I think the next video, man, yeah, the next video right here is shit. It's ready to be painted, so let's get it.